somebody posting about it. That's the worst thing. When someone leaves the organization, you had no clue that they had a bad experience. And then they're on social media posting about do not go to this company. Hello, Zakia Worthy. How are you doing today? Hi, Zev. I'm doing great. How about you? Amazing. Blessed. Uh, Zakia, let's share with the audience that you and I don't know each other that long. We've known each other for a few months. We work together on an amazing client, a beautiful, yes. amazing guy. Thank you, Stephen Gaffney. And um, you and I struck a friendship and yeah. started talking about the things that you do in your company. I want you to share this because I don't think enough people are talking about this. I don't think enough people are understanding this. So you're my culture expert. <laughs> Tell me why companies should really care about culture. Absolutely. Culture is to me, the new change management for a lens that everyone needs to be looking through. Um, culture after coming out of COVID has become so instrumental in building the company and an organization with intentionality, one which prioritizes the employees, the people who actually do the work, um, and one that makes it a place of belonging so that people want to work there and are vested and want to stay. Zakia, how did COVID change? Is it the remote work? Is it, yes. how did COVID change everything and why is culture so much important now? Um, so for one, I thought culture was always important. I think that COVID actually brought it to the forefront of those who did not think it was important because it impacted them in a way that, you know, it hit the bottom, hit the, hit the dollar, which people do care about. So with us going to hybrid work, it is never, ever going back to the the way that it was before the pandemic and organizations, everyone, you know, I always say you may not care about diversity, equity, inclusion, but you have to care about culture. You have to rebrand the culture of your organization coming out of COVID is something that everyone, every organization has to go through. They have to look at how they're engaging with their employees, how they're keeping them connected, whether they're being intentional, how they're making them feel as though they belong so that they want to stay. Because while people are talking about a recession, it is still an employee workspace where people can go from one organization to another without a problem. And they are doing that. So you have to be intentional about ways that you can engage your employees and make them feel like they'll, they want to stay with you. I, I think you're so right. And I led a team that was all in the office. It was 30, 40 of us. Uh, the atmosphere was great. I could see all my executives, all my uh, managers. We can have, we had lunches together every day. The culture was part of my personality. Now we do have some people here in the office. This is our Sarasota office. We have people in DC. We have people in Mexico. We have people all over the place. And I'm struggling because yes. I'm an extrovert. Yes. And I like to talk and touch yes. and hug. Yes. yes. Check on people and look at their screens. And I'm not a micromanager. I just like to work as a team. In the beginning, we were meeting three times a day with the entire team. Okay. Then it moved down to twice, then once, then it completely went off the wayside. Then it went to weekly. And now it's three times a week that we do the entire team kind of Slack Zoom meetings. Yeah. Now, the problem is, is I'm impatient. Okay. 20 people on a Zoom. It's so hard for me to stay in there. Can you give me some advice on how I can do that and make my employees feel that they're heard and I care about them. They are. And Zoom ha and virtual people have become kind of just worn out with it. You know, you might want to create a space where you're engaging with them personally that is not on the Zoom calls for work because really at that point, you're discussing clients, you're discussing business. You need to make sure that you're setting aside time to engage with them one-on-one, -on -one, at least maybe once a month. You know, just talk with them, kind of share with them, not talking about work things, hearing about their weekend, just anything at all where you're building that relationship. Relationships are the, the most important thing Absolutely. in the world. I'll tell you a story. I have a good friend. Uh, his name is Steven, and he had a heart transplant. So he received a heart from another human being okay. and everything he does right now goes from the prism of relationships. So can mm -hmm. you give some tips to the people watching, except from the personal conversation, how do you make your people feel important and feel like they are a good part of your team? Absolutely. Um, I think a skill that all of us can definitely lean into is listening, not just hearing, but truly listening and not listening to have something to say back, but listening to understand where the other person is coming from, making sure that they know that you value what it is that they're saying, that you value them as a person that they bring value to the team. Listening is one of the, is a great way to start that. Love that. This morning, I posted something on my LinkedIn that had to do with Stephen Scovey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And the law that I had the most struggle with, and it's one of the most important, seek first to understand before yes. you want to be understood really, really well. 
We have two ears, one mouth, right? Yes. God was an amazing engineer. We should use it correctly. Now, I love to talk. Can you give some tips for leaders that like to talk on how to give their team uh, the, the stage and the mic? Absolutely. Because um, I have the same problem. I love talking. I love sharing. So what I've had to do is, again, be intentional about stopping and really in my brain say, nope, you need to be quiet now and listen to what other people are saying. And I find that taking notes also helps you to tune into what they're saying and make sure that you're listening to hear and to understand. It's showing them that you value what they're saying at the same time. And it's making sure that you stay engaged so that if there is something that you want to say later, you've already written it down. You can go back to it, but you're respecting the rest of the team as well. Love that. One small thing I'll add to that. I've had people sitting with me in a meeting and I, I shouldn't do this, but I will and take their phone and as I'm talking, just, you know, go, uh, go through the phone. Now they were taking notes, but I just thought they were rude. Mm -hmm. So if you are taking notes, whether it's a notebook or phone, let the other person know, let them know right. it's important for me, what you're saying, I am going to take these notes. And I do just that. I'll pull out my phone and say, just when you know, I'm pulling my phone out. I'm going to my notes app. I forgot my notebook. I'm going to go ahead and write these down. Cause I want to capture what you're saying. And people are absolutely, I've never had anyone have an issue with it. They're like, absolutely, 100%, go ahead. I'll give a little shout out to this AI tool I use. It's called Otter AI. I add it to all our Zoom meetings. It records, transcribes. So that also helps me. So I don't have to make sure I write everything. I can go after the meeting and make sure that I got everything out of it. So the people that are listening to us, they want to improve culture. They want to hire better talent. Um, they want to grow. Can you give them three steps that they all should look at their company right now and take those three steps to see how they can improve their talent, improve their culture, and improve the overall company? I would say number one is looking at this as a business decision. I think a lot of times when we talk culture and say the word, people go into the touchy-feely, oh, it's not really important. Who cares about the culture? Understanding that it is important, that it is a part of the bottom line of the business. It is about a part of the performance management, employee workspace, all of those good things. It's a horizontal that needs to run across every single aspect of your organization, every single vertical, there needs to be a place where culture is running across that because it helps the organization operate more effectively. The second thing is I would involve employees in the process and the decision-making behind that. You know, you want to get feedback from them. You want to hear a lot of times leadership is scared to get feedback from their employees because they're like, oh, I don't want to hear any of the bad things. But the truth is you really can't address anything unless you know what's going on. So you love AI, Zev, and you talk about it all the time, but AI will never replace the human-centered aspect. And then I'll just throw in one more, be a champion of culture as continuous improvement. It's not something that you ever go, we've got it and that's it, we're done. It's something that you're continuously doing over and over again and looking at different ways to improve. So that's what I've got for you. Can you talk about one, two, three, how, how many ever you want red flags or signs that maybe there's an issue in the culture in the company? You want to look into why people are leaving your organization. Um, if there's an increase in HR complaints or if there's issues going on within a particular department, that's something else that you want to look at. Every Organizations are now doing this out of fear, which isn't necessarily it, the, the move either is social media <laughs> and somebody posting about it. That's the worst thing. When someone leaves the organization, you had no clue that they had a bad experience. And then they're on social media posting about do not go to this company. So those are things that you can look at. And then, you know, really, really looking at your performance management system and how you're getting feedback and how you're hearing from your employees and where you are receiving, again, the employee lens or viewpoint, if you don't have that set up within your organization, where it's a continuous process of receiving feedback from employees about their experiences, then that's a red flag. And that's something that you want to proactively address. Really, really, really powerful. So can you just tell us if people want to reach out to you, if people want to hear more of your wisdom, how can we do that? How can we reach out to you, Zakia? Absolutely. Um, KLAM LLC is my organization. It is a premier change management firm, and you can reach me at info at klamllc.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the stuff that you do for us and all the help that you've done. So glad we got together. And everybody, please follow Zakia, see what she's got to say, because it's really worthy. Zakia worthy, right? <laughs> That's the, cute. The word game. <laughs> Zakia, always a pleasure, and I'm Thank looking you. forward for our next video. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye.